Corporation case, colon R period R period, tilde 385, tilde 460, tilde 312, colon U period S period. Operation Toilet Flush and History of the Federal Postal Court. <laughs> The first opening of the Federal Postal Court in Quantum Grammar was in 2001 in Federal District Court in Casper, Wyoming in a in corporation case number R period R period 512-587-202-U period S period. And in that case, the mechanics of being a judge was performed by me, Postmaster colon Russell hyphen J colon Gould, where the clerk of court as the Port Authority joined me on contract to establish a judgment, an order, a command. And that command, because the clerk of the courts is the Port Authority as Postmaster, when the clerk joined the estate of the charter vessel claim contract, the clerk and claimant became two postmasters in joinder, in joinder of the contract. And the contract was then banked by me within the 45-day trust moratorium in the establishment of the Global Postal Union in Bern, Switzerland. And in my banking of the judgment, the Port Authority at the Universal Postal Union complied with banking the contract and the disqualification of the fictitious grammar charts of the Universal Postal Union. The banking was done in July of 2001 and the judgments were made in June of 2001. Thus, I complied with the 45-day trust moratorium maintaining the rules of the continuance of evidence, which is the number one job of the contract, is that the rules of the continuance of the evidence must be maintained at all times. With the disqualification of the charters for the corporate structure of the Universal Postal Union in July of 2001, the shareholders of the Universal Postal Union and the tenants of the Universal Postal Union, as well as the owners of the Postal Union in Bern, Switzerland, were put on publication and traversed in a face-to-face -face meeting with me in 2003 on the establishment of the new postal corporation called the Global Hyphen Postal Hyphen Union. And in that establishment, I closed the door so nobody could come back into the Universal Postal Union and set up a quantum system, which the Postal Union concurred with in that space. Basically, I built a system that could not be forged, that could not be monopolized by someone else because they were not the creator of the quantum system. And therefore, Operation Toilet Flush. Flushing the turds right out of the quantum system and flushing the Universal Postal Union down the drain. So the turds can't come back into the postal system and try to reauthorize a system that was already established. Because they lack the knowledge of a judgment, they lack the protocols of the flag, they lack, lack the mechanics of the quantum grammar system. Therefore, it's a copyrighted material the quantum postal system, as well as the quantum postal court, which is known as the federal postal court. With my syntaxing of the charter for the Universal Postal Union, it nullified the authorization for the Universal Postal Union to enter into contract with anyone since the year 2001. At the meeting in 2003, it was certified by the Postal Union employees that were at the, at the meeting in Bern, Switzerland on June 18th of 2003. The certification was the proof that the Universal Postal Union's charters were fraud. Certification is the verification of the charters for the Universal Postal Union to be in fictitious grammar, which means they modified their nouns with adverbs, adjectives, and pronouns, creating pronouns and verbs. Creating a condition, a state, a fiction, a, something, a babble of something that does not exist for all the dumbasses of the world who think that there's a banking system, who think that there's presidents. It is just not. It is martial law. And the theater of martial law is controlled by might makes right. So you better be correct when you bring your might makes right or you're going to get flushed in the Operation Toilet Flush.
The consequences of my maintaining the rules of the continuance of evidence created many scenarios in my life, from my battles in Wisconsin to Michigan and other battles against the U.S. military in the largest court martialing case of corporation case, R period, R period, tilde 385, tilde 410, tilde 312, colon U period, S period, that was conducted for four years at the Washington Mall with the U.S. military documenting and videotaping each trial. Because of my choices, there were many scenarios that the world is unaware of that happened within the Federal Postal Court. The first casualty of the Federal Postal Court was from my friend, Janice-K colon Logan, who fell victim to the lies and the setup by my partner, David hyphen Wing colon Miller, who told her she was a federal judge, but she was untrained in the mechanics of being a federal judge. Thus, Janice-K colon Logan was David hyphen Wing colon Miller's first victim of going to jail under false claims that she was claiming to be a federal judgment because she did not have the credentialing, the tools of a judgment, which is the seat of judgment for a judge and bank banker, which is corporation case R period, R period, 512-587-202, colon U period, S period. That is the certification of what a judgment looks like. So in order to be a federal judge or a judge of any stature, you must have sit at the seat of the judgment, which means you have, must have contract in hand, verifying that you have the credentialing to command the authority of the court, command the authority of the fee for freight for the contract, for the judgment, and command the authority to hold trial within that court building. Without that certification and without banking it after you've received your judgment, you are not a federal judge. This was Janice hyphen Colin Logan's failure and David hyphen Wynn Colin Miller's due diligence negligence in educating Janice hyphen K Colin Logan on what she needed to be a judge. Therefore, in 2002 to 2004, she spent two years in jail for her not knowing and David hanging her out to dry. It is very unfortunate that the world at the time did not have the full closure about what was happening to the victim Janice hyphen K Colin Logan and what David hyphen Wynn Colin Miller spun up to create casualties for someone's life. And this is very unfortunate. And I'm coming forward today with that full closure saying, if you're going to claim to be a judge, these are the criteria that you must have in place prior to you making these claims. Otherwise, you're giving false closure to the general public and you are a public safety hazard, period. Last week, for the first time in many years, I contacted Janice K. Colon Logan. And I gave her closure that I was going to use her name as a sample of what happens when you are not a correct federal postal judge within the quantum system. And she had one word of counsel to those of you who are claiming to be federal postal judges without authorization as for the correct credentialing to be a judge. Number one, David hyphen Winkola Miller could not authorize you as a judge. That does not make you a judge. And number two is you will be stood down. And somebody will sit you down and put you in your place. And to the general public that you don't take this technology for granted because it has consequences of accountability. And Janice Hyphen K. Colin Logan learned that lesson. Full colon Mark Hyphen Daniel Full Colin Seeger. Hey, Mark Hyphen Daniel Colin Seeger. Um, in 2006, you were a method server against Donald A. Davis, who was a U.S. District Deputy Attorney General for the Western District of Michigan. And you were a method server for Colin Cladella hyphen and Colin Darland and James Colin Darland in 2006 in the Western District of Michigan in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Were you the method server in that case? Yes, sir. <clears throat> and as the method server in that case, you were you heard and got the audio tape of my doings in that court case. Yes, sir. Where in that case they came after me and I won the case against Donald A. Davis, and the case was out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Yes. And in that case, you witnessed and purchased the audio of my trial from the clerk of courts. Yes, sir. 
And on the audio, you witnessed the flag bearer of the Title IV flag, David Hype and Colin Miller, take the fiction gram fiction oath administered by the clerk of court and surrender his position as flag bearer and corporate owner of the Title IV flag in 2006. Yes, unfortunately I did. And when David took that fiction oath and he surrendered it, how did that make you feel? Uh, confused and um, disappointed. Just disappointed. Yeah, he, he went against everything we were fighting for. Did others in the community, and there were quite a few coming on board at that time, when they heard the audio, did the movement of the quantum grammar lose steam at that point because of Dave's surrendering of the Title IV flag? I believe so, because um, they didn't... They, they didn't understand why he did it. Um, they didn't understand uh, the consequences of what he did. And, you know, they're working so hard to try to make something work. And then you get this, you know, and to make that little, a whole lot of stuff. Yeah, when he surrendered, others lost a lot of respect for David Hyphen and Colin Miller and what we were doing at the time in the grammar. Completely. Uh, Completely. Yeah. How did it make you feel about me keeping my word and not surrendering the Title IV flag? Oh, I, it, there was no doubt in my mind that that was going to happen. <laughs> that um, because you have strong convictions and everybody knows it. Um, you do what you say you're going to do, and um, so you put up or shut up. You put up. So. Um, Dave didn't do that. I mean, Dave shut up and they scared to you. So, um, yeah, you're, uh, yeah. they, they, you're they scared, man. they scared Dave pretty bad. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. um, just out of curiosity, um, did you know Janice hyphen K colon Logan? Yeah. Uh, she was, and she was an appointed judge by David hyphen Win colon Miller and, in knowing her, she lacked knowledge of her position, but did, did David hang her out to dry and, and cause her to go to jail for a number of years? I believe so. Um, he, he should have never done that. Um, she, you know, that was just a shame. I, I'm, I'm just bummed about that. that should never happen. She was, Janice hyphen K. Colin Logan was a very brave woman. Would you say that that's a true statement? Oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah, you can't argue that. Never. You can never argue that. Yeah, she she may not have had the knowledge because of what David did to her, yep. but she was very brave. Yep. And, and she also did what she said. She was a woman of her word. Yep, she was. What would you say to the fact that David Hyphen Winkle and Miller authorized people after he surrendered? What would you say to the people following those people? No, nah, look, if you're going to go down this road, then you better be prepared for everything. Okay. And if you're not, then you do what David Win Miller did. And it was just wrong uh, when he taught so many people to do the right thing. And then, you know, when the time came and you had all the stuff started hitting the fan, right, we backed out, which was, you know, cowardly. Um, and so you got to learn from that and go, look, this, this ain't for the faint of heart. If you're going to do it, you better know what's going to happen or what could happen to you if you do it. So... Um, and, and what do you say? Well, what would you have to say to the people that he supposedly authorized after he surrendered? Did they not do their due diligence? You know, getting involved, they should have known everything about it, just like they would have to know everything about you um, before they even started. Um, so, is he was he 100 percent in, or was he 90 percent in and 10 percent out? No, nobody knew that until that moment. Um, but after that moment. Nobody should have followed whatever he was doing. Nobody should have done it.
because he wasn't man enough to stick by it. So um, it just that's a shame. That's a shame. He, he did a lot of work, uh, a lot of really good work, and he, you know, gave it away. So Mark Heif and Daniel Kohlenseger had firsthand knowledge of being a method server in the case where I defeated Donald Davis, the U.S. prosecutor in the Western District of Michigan in 2006. He purchased the audio tape of my former business partner, David Heifenwin Colin Miller, surrendering the Title IV flag by taking a fiction grammar oath in 2006, nullifying David's credentialing in authorizing the Title IV flag or the Federal Postal Court to anyone else in the future after 2006. When David surrendered his Title IV flag authorization, Title IV sections 1, 2, and 3 of the Title IV flag, I did not speak to David for five years because I was very upset with him because he made choices to not honor his word because he could not back up that which he was speaking. Therefore, the federal government and the momentum that we had at the time within the citizens of this country lost momentum due to the fact that David didn't leave, live to his word. And that was a huge setback for the federal postal court, but I still kept in operation and I still kept moving forward. In 2009, 2010, I was approached by David Heifenwin Colin Miller again, who brought a technology to me that he said was gonna help the world, and it was the syntaxing of the um, mortgages. And I looked at those cases and I got involved in those cases and we were in way over our heads because the banks were still using might versus right. The courts were still corrupt using fraudulent authorities, making assumptions and presumptions and false conclusions, establishing collusion against the citizenry. I ended up in the U.S. Court, Maritime Court in Washington, D.C., where the Maritime Court sent me an Illuminati stamp for, as their file stamp. And I took that stamp to the U.S. Department of Engraving for the U.S. Treasury Department in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The engraving department has the records for the file stamps for the federal government, where the Treasury agents and I got in the books for the engraving for embossed seals for the U.S. government to look for the seal that the U.S. Maritime Court had sent me uh, to verify what jurisdiction it was coming from because we couldn't tell. And the U.S. Treasury agents told me that this is not a, a, a certified seal from the U.S. government and that I had stumbled onto a private club of judges functioning as a rogue agency and they warned me to be cautious. So as, after further looking at the seal, we put a mirror up to it and looked at it backwards. And as we did that, looked at the seal in the mirror, it had the words Benjamin Franklin Postal Court. And since I was in Philadelphia at the time, I went to the Benjamin Franklin Post Office. And this was in December of 2012. On December 20th of 2012, I got the U.S. Postal Service and the Benjamin Franklin Post Office to authorize me to go into the bank book drafts of Benjamin Franklin, open up the glass casing, unlock the bank books of the federal government and the Benjamin Franklin Postal mechanics stemming from the founding positions of the former United States and the United States of America, where I read his bank drafts where he had borrowed 1.6 million francs from France on July 1st, 1775. For those of you researchers out there, please go to the Benjamin Franklin Post Office, show your knowledge, get them to open the books, and read it for yourself. Federal government and the money, when you follow the money for the federal government and the First Continental Congress, it will take you to July 1st, 1775, the first day of government. Nothing becomes law for one year, one day, and there's three-day rescission, which will take you to July 4th, 1776, the day they could enter into contract. So because of that, the, the Benjamin Franklin did not give full closure, to my knowledge, to the founding fathers who authorized the Constitution and the Bill of Rights from 1776, and he lumped the fee for freight for the money that he borrowed into the note, creating a bankruptcy, creating a debt 
for those who engaged in contract on July 4th, 1776. So you had debtors engaging in contract saying, how can a debtor engage in contract for free people? This is an oxymoron. This was part of a bankruptcy ruse that ended in 1999 when you trace back the trails. Because of my dealings with the Benjamin Franklin Postal Court, I made a deal with David Eiffel and Colin Miller. Because he had surrendered the flag in 2006, my deal with David Hyphen and Colin Miller is that he could no longer authorize anyone to function in the federal postal court that I had found and that we were gonna come on board as joint creators of. Because of his surrendering of the flag, of Title IV flag, sections one, two, and three in Grand Rapids, Michigan in 2006, he agreed to the terms of the contract that he would not authorize anyone to join the federal postal court and that he would not engage in contract unless I was on the contract specifically because he did not have flag authorization to move contract since 2006. If he's on contract with me, had authorization because I was the flag holder, I was the bearer of the flag. He had authorization to be on those contracts. Any other contract that he authorized on his own was false and misleading to the general public because they did not know that he had surrendered the flag in 2006. For those of you who want to witness that, please contact Grand Rapids, Michigan, the U.S. District Courts, and get the audio of David Eiffel and Colin Miller surrendering the flag. I'm looking at David bringing you on board in 2010 as a judge, but he didn't have the credentialing to do that, right? right? Because he had already surrendered the flag in 2006 in Grand Rapids, Michigan, in federal court. Well, I'm looking at it from a different perspective than, than yes. you and everyone else. And when, when you saw, you know, the evidence when you came to see me in 2010 in, in Steamboat, Colorado, you saw him signing his name in fiction. I mean, yeah, I was me, blown away. what did that make you feel when he was lying? I was absolutely blown away because they didn't have, they didn't have the, they didn't have the mean to me if he could do something like that once. How many more times has he done this, you know, to me? Yeah. While leading yeah, and, for, and, from, and from my perspective, before you got involved, there was a woman, her name was Janice, I think, K. Cole and Logan, and he tricked her into the same scenarios as, as you, where he gave you a limited education, but he did yes. not give you the credentialing and the knowledge to carry out the task and, of what you were claiming. So back to you uh, sitting on with, with David. What came to your mind when you became cognizant that you needed to stop and correct this lie that you, that he had purported upon you to claim where he had you into a position claiming to be a federal judge? It means that I had to have conversations with you because you were the only one that was going to give me the answers I sought, provided I asked the correct question. That's a fact. You did. Once you figured out how to ask the correct questions... At that point, I, I concurred that maybe you and I should have a face-to-face sit-down because I wanted to know the volition of who this guy was, Monty Eiffel and Aaron Colin Mueller. And, and you flew out to see me in Colorado, and, and we had a, a serious conversation, several of them. And yeah. upon, upon that, you were like, you know what? I need to nip this in the bud. Let's uh, drive to Wisconsin. And and we and we rented a car, and we talked. You had a lot of questions. You know, from I'm, I was new to you. Right. And I but I felt your your pain because I saw my friend Janice Hyphen K. Colin Logan, who was a very brave person, just very compartmentalized in knowledge because David, number one, didn't know because he had not been taught. Right. And so he couldn't give her the full closure that was necessary to get through hers. And she ended up doing three years in jail. And that was and, and really harmed her family on the same claims that you were making. And I didn't you told me you were a family man and I didn't really want to see you and your family have to go through what Janice had to go through because that that was very difficult on their family. And, no, so, I'm and, great. and so I agreed to have you come out. And uh, after conversation and you looking at the forensics and hearing my story, how did that make you feel about David when, when you heard the truth about him surrendering the flag in 2006? But he did, just didn't have the credentialing to give you the flag authorizations anymore. How did that make you feel? Stunned. Absolutely stunned. Um, because even with my limited inf- knowledge that I had then, what I did know that was correct about particular things, I also knew David knew, so why would he do that? It made no sense. It was a public safety. He was a, being a public safety hazard, creating 
creating scenarios to get people in trouble. As we as we got in the car and we headed to see David, David had no idea that you and I knew even knew each other, did he? I believe that's correct. Yeah. I think it's true. And, and when we pulled into his driveway, he just happened to be in his driveway. What was his reaction when he saw me and you together? Can I say it verbatim without being uh, looked down upon? <laughs> for sure, for sure. So we pulled up. David didn't know that I that I was coming. He certainly knew the date that Russell was coming. But when he walked up, to, he walked up to the passenger side of the car to see who was there, and he saw it with me. And no BS, he went, "Oh fuck!" and ran into the house, just bolted. Yeah. And I, Russell and I looked at each other and went, whoa. <laughs> I, I started laughing because I, I look, I already knew that David was a was a surrender of the flag and a coward to the country. I knew where he was at, but I wanted to see it face to face. To me, that was priceless. And I wanted to see how you because you you had made claims in the federal judicial system and I'm I'm chief judge, so I had to I had to see how you conducted yourself the continuance of the evidence and how you pre prepared your dis your recovery case and claim with David Ivan and Wayne Colin Miller not telling you the truth. And I, 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 I keep in my mind, you ran on the door and like, you lied to me and I was watching you run in and I, I just let you go do your thing for a bit. And I just kind of sat outside because I wanted you two to, to talk. And so what would that conversation look, did it look like for you? The conversation was is David kind of avoiding things. I mean, he didn't, because if he really wanted to know, he would have said, well, what did Russell tell you? What did you ask Russell? It wasn't like that. His his response to it essentially, well, there was another part of the argument, and that was about the lawsuits being stolen. And I believe you know what I'm talking about. I do. Um, he gave me closure on what he said that what happened there. The additional argument with David was how could you let that let them be stolen if you're the chief federal postal judge, you control you control it or navigate it. And his answer back to me was a threat in that he says he says you can't you can't hurt me or harm me. He says the worst thing to happen in this world is not death, it's to never have existed. And that's what he told me. So it was a direct threat to you because yeah. you were, because you were exposing him to be a liar. But it wasn't the last one either. <laughs> no, no, no. As, as we learn, as we learn here from, yeah. I just, I was just curious because because I'm I'm watching this, and you know what, Monty, to be honest with you, when I met you, I was I was a little taken back that you reached out to me because I was a little upset that you were calling yourself a federal judge. If you keep in mind, I'm like. And, and when I showed you why you weren't, the things that David didn't show you, I saw a real want in your eye for the truth, right? You can't fake that. You, you, you were just simply wanting full closure and the truth to how you got yourself tricked into a position by David Eiffel and Colin Miller. And, and, I, and, and, and that really, you know, I thought long and hard about it, and I didn't want you to end up in jail. I didn't even hardly know you. But I, I, I knew I, I was cognizant of your capacity to syntax, and you, you demonstrated your capacity on the fundamentals of the parsing syntax grammar to comprehend the what makes an adverb, what makes an adjective, what makes a, a verb, what makes a pronoun. You you got it. I mean, you were a very good syntax. So I, I was knowledgeable that you had spent. A considerable amount of time learning that because that just doesn't yes. happen overnight uh, at that time you know there's more improvements and there's people teaching now that have gotten better and better at it but at the time of building when i built this program of the quantum system it, it there was not a lot of teaching because it was all first-hand application in the middle of the courtrooms to prove to myself number one that this venue is and the mechanics that made it in, built is what I had been working on for. And when you saw my work, you were you were quite taken back, if I recall. You were like, whoa. You, you became knowledgeable that David was not the creator of this. That's not what his story was to, to the public. That you could watch a lot of David's stuff that he claims a lot of stuff that, that wasn't his nativity creation. Who did, who did you learn when you saw the forensics built it? You. Yes. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, and, and so I was quiet because 
David always told me a statement. He says, keep your enemies close. And I made a choice not to work with the Clintons. I made the choice not to work with the Rothschilds. I made the choice not to not to capitulate to his ideology of only educating the top 1% of the world and keeping the general public stupid. And so he said that in one of his videos, he says, I'm here to educate the judges and the top percent. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that, that was his, his, his ideology. And then he said, he told me that his goal was to only hire stupid people. That way they couldn't figure anything out. And so as we get further along down in the next segment here, we will take a look at some of his hiring techniques and what you and I ran into under corporate because, you know, I, I did concur because I did give you the knowledge of the mechanics of what it took to be a federal postal judge and how that works. That, number one, you had a good heart and, and you were willing to call David on the carpet because David needed, he wasn't being held accountable. Like he says, you know, he, could, he was trying to make people be erased, right? Yeah. right. You, and you didn't fold to them. So for that, I give you a lot of credit. A lot of credentials, and I liked you because you had the courage to do that. So, thank you, sir. And at at that point, you wanted your judgeship and everything changed, and you wanted me on the credentialing on that because you became cognizant that David didn't have credentials to authorize judges. Is that no, right? We we were you and I were David. I don't remember how many days. A couple, at least a couple, two, three days. Yes. And uh, there was other things that were being worked on, and Yes, that's when that came up, and um, you and I did paperwork after that. I don't recall whether we did it at David's or not. I think we did do it at David's. And, and I think we, we did. I know there was paperwork going. Yeah, that, that was what we were working on because the the oath that you had taken, David had authorized, and you were, and you were telling Dave you didn't have the credentials to authorize this. And so we came on a three-judge panel, you, I, and him, this David, David did have judge knowledge, no doubt. He was just selective on keeping whoever he hired dumbed down, right? Because that way you could only get into the court and prolong cases and keep his tech. It was a way for him to advertise his technology because nobody was getting any solutions, right? And so you'd have to stay in court, stay in court, stay in court. Meanwhile, the grammar would get looked at by people, and that was his way to advertise back then. Because the internet wasn't is what it was to this day. Yeah, right. It's a, it was a totally different space as far as getting the word out. Now we have all these wrong leaders who've been spun up by David who are entering into the theater, and and that's a contrast if you to watch their um, foolishness because they didn't do their they were very slothful in their due diligence about who David was and who he wasn't, right? Because David kept that hid so well because the internet wasn't the same. And, yeah. I didn't, and I didn't speak out about it because I was keeping my enemies close. And I, 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 I identified David as, as, my, as the enemy of mankind because of the volition of a habitual condition to put people in harm's way. So, yes. so upon that, we, we, we struck a friendship, you and I, and, and, and we kept David in the mix. And in that, we... You know, I had a I had a contract in a in a concurrence with David that he couldn't hire any more people because and and you 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 ran into that well as David went out and he hired a woman by the name of Gerald Hyphen Sue Colin Marshall, um, Leighton Hyphen Lionel Colin Ward, and Alan Colin Cobra, and those people. Mark really, Allen, full colon Mark Hyphen Allen full colon Corba. Orba, that's it. And those three people were putting themselves in harm's way, and you and I became knowledgeable of this. And in 2014, you and I stopped and corrected, and we sent in a hold harmless to those three people because they lack knowledge of their positions. And Correct. let's talk a little bit about that. On the hold harmless, we sent it to Leighton first, and, and what was Leighton's, uh, first of all, what did David say about Leighton at, at his house, about Leighton going to jail for all the wrongs he did? Well, kind of putting the, the horse before the cart on that time-wise, but uh, 
David, in order to get Russell and I to sign off on the paperwork, said that Layton had knowledge for his position as a federal hyphen postal hyphen court hyphen clerk. Correct. Russell and I got on the phone with them because David says, call him up, talk to him. He said, okay. So we called him up and concluded that they didn't know their position. Correct. That's when following that was when the hold harmless was like, we got to do a hold harmless with these guys. Um, yes. Layton, full colon Layton, hyphen Rhino, full colon Ward, didn't bat an eye and jumped on it immediately. He had no problems uh, autographing it. Yeah. Uh, Cheryl, full colon Cheryl, I don't know her full name. Sue colon Marshall. Thank you. Uh, wouldn't, wouldn't autograph it and neither would Mark. And did they say why? I believe it was something as simple as they said they didn't have to answer to you. Correct. Correct. That's what they recall. And, and I had a conversation with David that they are they're clerks and they were making a judicial, judicial determination as clerks. Correct. All they can do all they can do is take the paperwork, autograph it, and hint say it, send it back. Correct. That's that they didn't even know their own jobs. That's how pathetic David hired. Upon that, we sent those to Dave, to Cheryl and Mark. And what did David do? David took them all and said, well, they're not going to sign. She's not going to sign. So he jumped on board a vessel where he was in the ship's company in autographs. He was not party to the, to the ship's company, and he trespassed the board of vessel. And at that point, I'm stopping and correcting. I comprehend that David's trying to come under a document contract claim 53E master's license of, of the former federal rules of civil procedure because I had been through the mechanics in the federal judicial system with federal judges and, and state and county judges coming off the bench and sitting next to me fun, trying to function as my master and I had to stop and correct that. So I comprehended exact precise what Dave was doing. However, I, because it was direct under uh, a, a straight bill of the lading, which David was not a party to, had to stop and correct David because he was trespassing a port of vessel. It'd be like me taking a claim of the life from somebody that, or you taking a claim of the life from somebody that you didn't have a claim of life with and using their number right. on someone else's paperwork. It was, it was, it was totally buffoonery. It was total theft. And it's a total lie. It's forgery. It's, it's forgery. It's, it's, a <laughs> it's, it's a number of things that, that David was guilty of. And so we're going to show this paperwork here and, and show our work on stopping and correcting Dave. And we started stopping and correcting Dave on March 21st, 2015, where we sent him the original claims of his trespass. And when you talk to him on the phone after you've been served, what did he tell you? Um, what it was came down to is we we were asking David to change to, to change those numbers and do it correct, and David answered back to me because I have a pocket full of numbers. Yes, yeah, it's basically so, basically saying he's going to do whatever he wants. Yeah, he's going to do what he wants. Yeah, um, not going to be correct. Just going to make up numbers, use other people's numbers, and try to fit a storyline to fit a narrative that was false. Correct. Yeah, and so upon that. We waited the one year, one day, and we served him a summary judgment. And that summary judgment was served on him on the 18th of March, 2016. And in that, he was commanded and voted out of the federal postal court for his behavior of theft, his trespass of boarding vessels without authorization, and using numbers, like he said, a pocket full of numbers that he can just make up. You know, I'd like to point something out interesting, and I don't, I'm, I'm sure I've mentioned it to you before, but the way we found it, or you, the way we found it was when you use an embossed stamp, you can't, you can't see it, right? It's, it's, a, it's a relief. Yes. So what David did was he, he took ink and put it across the top of that stamp and went, like, holy, this isn't your number. <laughs> it, 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 it was my number. It was your number. 
Yeah, he was taking my number and putting it across the stamp after he had already concurred at the Benjamin Franklin Postal Court that I would put my number on the case because it was the only one with credentials, but he couldn't use it unless I was on the paperwork because he had surrendered the flag in 2006. And so he lied, thought he could get away with a, a lie, and then he got called on it by the two federal postal judges, and we made a ruling under three-judge panel, which he had agreed to when he autographed your oath that we were a three-judge panel. If, if you call on your oath, that's what it says. And as a three-judge panel, we voted two to one to put him on pause so he wouldn't harm the federal postal court and wouldn't harm the people of the world. And of course, normal protocol, habitual doer, he yeah. did the exact opposite and went out and tried to authorize more people without false expectations, false numbers, false hopes. So that is, that is a good thing that the lie er was stopped. However, the lie continues and hopefully people do the due diligence upon this video, seeing this video and come to their own conclusions about the forensics of the behavior of David Eiffel and Cole Miller as a theft maneuver of corporate raid yeah. because he locked himself away from his own technology. Now in 2005 and 2006, I was met by the NSA, the Department of Defense and the CIA who said that David Ivan Lincoln Miller was the laughing stock of the elite because he had managed to lock himself away from his own technology because he had surrendered his flag, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. of what he had done in the court martial of Bush and Cheney as an adjective, adjective pronoun, which you saw the forensics on, where he autographed a, a green card without punctuation when it was directed to punctuation on the same front part. Mm -hmm. So because of him doing that, he actually disappeared and tried to get away from, get away with it. And we kept him on point and we called him on the carpet, though it was a long and tedious task. Yeah. Now, there, was, there was another female that also claimed to be a federal postal judge. And you're gonna see on this video, the forensics of David actually having to kick her out of her position. And then we're gonna show the forensics of David going back in and reauthorizing her with my number thinking that it's okay. And when I talked to Kayleen Cola, Colin Kahali on that, she told me that it's only a number, no big deal. She's going to use it no matter what. And I'm like, but it's not your number. It's not even David's number. She goes, well, I don't care. I'm going to use it anyway. And I said, well, that's called thievery. And she hung up the phone on me in anger, of course. She was quite angry. Yeah. So it's a pattern. <laughs> Yeah, that was a couple. Yeah, in your dealings with Kayleen Kahali, Colin Kahali, what did what did you find? Did did you think that she lacked knowledge as a federal judge? Yes, as well. What sticks out in my mind as well that she's not hearing what she wants to hear. She is particularly belligerent, and communication breaks down when belligerence occurs. Well, she's so, actually not been in too many court battles, and so she had not been tested. Mm -hmm. And I always tell people that it takes 12 years of every day being in and out of the courts that I will even consider someone to be a federal postal judge. But since the federal postal courts are closed, and they've been closed since 2016, um, or mm -hmm. 2014 for David, because he we were stopping and correcting, and under knowledge of his damages and his trespass, he was, and since 2014, he did not have the credentialing to, to hire people. So it's unfortunate mm -hmm. that he went out and violated his own grammar mechanics of being honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you what do you think of the people that David spun up after he was kicked out? What do you think of their I, knowledge? I think that they don't know. I think that they. I think that they think they know what they're talking about. And I've watched a lot of videos. Full Colin Kershaw doesn't know what he's doing. His reasoning for what he's doing does not mechanically work. <laughs> this doesn't. Um, I, I, I don't know 
I mean, I don't know. He's just, he's just doing it wrong. And he's, he's going to be harming a lot of people that decide to follow him uh, because they're going to be, you know, taught the same wrong. So it's just going to kind of grow and make more people. So and put, put people in a bad position. Kind of and they're not going to be able to figure their way out of it because they don't have a basis for getting them out of it. No. Or a base Sean, foundation. Yeah. I don't, that gentleman is being spun up and being safeguarded by the same people that tried to save, safeguard Dave from lying and getting away with his lies on planet Earth. But he, he's, he, people are catching on to him, knowing that he has told a fable knowing that he's doing it deliberate with a volition now at this point, because he knows it's a fable. Mm -hmm. He With a volition, he is trying to damage people. And that's mm -hmm. not what mankind needs right now. We need solutions. We need truth. We need closure. We need correct closure. Yeah. And upon correct clo closure, then people can make choices. And I really value people doing due diligence on our story and mm -hmm. to look at the forensics for the facts of the correctness. Yeah. Yeah. For I concur. In 2013, at the time, I met David Hyphen Wing Colin Miller's newest victim, Kayleen Colon Kahali, who he convinced was a federal postal judge. And like before and the others before, he wrong led them into thinking because they filed an oath without the correct credentialing of a judgment that they were some kind of judge. And I went to meet Kayleen and she was very upset when I informed her she was not a judge and I gave her the technology to be a judge. I taught her how to do it because I wanted her to be successful. After giving her a year to function as a federal postal judge and looking at her performances, it just wasn't up to speed and up to snuff on what a, what a federal postal judge is supposed to be. Therefore, David Hyphen Winkle and Miller and myself had to file documentation at the head post office in Honolulu, Hawaii, terminating her position as a federal postal judge. And we had to use my corporation numbers, which were the umbrella to, for the federal postal court. And we had to terminate her from her position. And she was very upset about it. Within a couple of years, without my knowledge, David Hyphen Winkle and Miller went back to her Hawaii and reauthorized her with my number. And I called her on the phone and I asked her, hey, that's my number you're using. That's called identity theft. You can't do that. She says, I don't care, it's only a number. I'm gonna use it anyway. I says, but that's thievery. And she hung up the phone. For the general public, I so value you to do your due diligence on these people. For these people have been spun up by my ex-business partner, David Hyphen Colin Miller, into a lying theater thinking that they have a function and a position, which is just not true because they lack the credentialing to be in this position. Therefore, if they're telling you things and they're putting you and your cargo in position, you can be harvested for they're not correct in the mechanics of how they're bringing themselves forward to the world. Wow. Wow. Talk about a residual of habitual public safety hazard putting people in harm's way even from the dead where, where you have this this liar this habitual public safety hazard my ex-business partner david ife and Cola miller spinning off people where people are getting in trouble wrong leading people down venues to get people in trouble and harvesting people's things stolen and he spins off this guy from britain a guy that's never been in a courtroom, a guy that takes for granted, thinks he has the copyrights of my flag, the one that I fought for, you have any clue what you're doing? The answer is no. You have the residual of David Hyphen Wing Colin Miller coming up from the dead, acting like in his last plights on the planet, his last three years after he's done all this carnage and all this damage and surrendered his flag and caused people to go to jail. He spins this guy up out of Britain, who number one, does not have the copyrights on my flag. Number two, does not have the credentialing as a federal postal judge. Number three, is not even in the federal postal court because it was closed in 2014. 
and gets spun up and wrong leads the general public, wrong leads people and gets, puts people in harm's way? Are you kidding me? This is Operation Toilet Flush! <laughs> You, you, you need to learn how to be a postal employee and join the post office as a postmaster. See, what, what you've told me has completely gone over my head, and I'm being very honest with you. I want you to know the level of the engagement is just, boom, it's just going straight straight over my head. I'm, I'm doing my best to concentrate on what you're saying. But this is a mechanism that I, I've never seen before. Some of them just cannot comprehend, uh, comprehend it, you know? Yes, I do. Um, so, yeah, I, I definitely can do that. I can definitely get people to do this and engage you and get some sort of tutorage going on. Because it's like the blind <laughs> leading the blind, you know. I am blind. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I am blind. And there's people behind me and there's people in front of me and they're relying on me. But I am blind. You're not the residual of David Ivan Wayne Colin Miller because he surrendered. He was a coward. He did not have the testicular fortitude, nor the knowledge of what it takes to be the man. And the federal government knows this. That's why I gave David Hathaway Colin Miller the knowledge on how to order the courts open. And that's when he did it in Honolulu, Hawaii. And the world court judges in November of 2001 that were on the phone with me and David out of the Hague, Netherlands, know that who the man is. The man that educated David Ivan Wayne Cullen Miller on how to be a judge and showed him how to open up the federal court, postal court and how to be a player in the world. You're talking to the guy himself. And now the residual turd of David Ivan Wayne Cullen Miller. And he's so sophisticated and he's a judge. And he's going to tell you he's created the quantum system. And he has the nerve to tell the general public and say that He's countable for his action? You did not create the quantum system, charlatan, liar. What you've done is you, you are the spun up turd of something that's being flushed down the toilet. Like so many others who have, were spun up by David Hyphen Wayne Colin Miller, Colin Layton Hyphen Lionel Colin Award was one of the biggest buffoons that we've ever seen within the Federal Postal Court who lacked knowledge of his position, lacked knowledge of his authorization, but was wise enough and smart enough to autograph a hold harmless with me, but though he did not comprehend what that meant for him. Because David Ivan Wynn Cullen Miller spun this guy up, and this was a family man, a man with children, a man that was married, and this man is in jail right now for a long time because he did not have the credentialing and the knowledge to be in the position within the Federal Postal Court because the Federal Postal Court was closed. And David Hyphen Wynn Colin Miller did not tell him the truth. And this is what you get. If you're not accountable for your actions, you live in a lie. And if you live in a lie, you will get flushed down the toilet. Look, David and I had a business connection. And in that business connection, we shared concepts with each other. We learned from each other. Hey, he was the only guy around that was had the capacity to comprehend what I was building at the time. The general public did not want to learn. They were all laughing on Operation Mockingbird. I was being run down in every aspect of my life. And David, hell, he showed up. At least he showed up. Granted, his word was no good. Granted, he was not accountable for his actions. Granted, he put people in harm's way, and I'm sorry about that. However, I've come clean, and the Federal Postal Court's been closed since 2014. Period. And Dave was kicked out. Period. David knew it, he did not like it, and he did everything to be uncountable for his actions. The quantum system is about accountability, and it starts with me. And this is why I'm coming forward, giving you closure on Operation Toilet Flush and the history of the Federal Postal Court. But for the postmasters and the claimants and the sovereigns who are getting your claims of the life and are coming into the quantum system, we will hold the accountability to these charlatans and we will show in Operation Toilet Flush that these charlatans are not who they say and they will not be followed and they will be flushed out and embarrassed on the global scene of public closure because the first rule of contract is transparency, knowledge, comprehension, and closure. 
Without that, you can't enter into contract. So I want to give you closure on why I said the Federal Postal Court's closed and why you have Federal Postal Court contracts. Because I am the author, creator of the Federal Postal Court, in my now space, I can open it for those specific cases. However, a new venue has been set up for you, which was established in 2005, that each one of you, with Claims of Life with me, will be getting shortly.